point pounds in the last couple of minutes. Uh, but like we promised, uh, remember, we have the management of Jana Small Finance Bank waiting by. Jana Small Finance Bank has launched a new liquid plus fixed deposit offering providing an interest rate of 6.75% per annum. The offer is effective from September 19th and it aims to attract short-term funds. To discuss this and more, we have Ajay Kanwal, MD and CEO at Jena Small Finance Bank, joining us. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Kanwal. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, first up, uh, talk to us about this latest offering of yours. And number two, how has business panned out as far as Q2 is concerned? So first, a very good afternoon to you and all the viewers. Uh, this uh, product is interesting because we did feel that when it comes to short-term money management, we probably don't have a competitive offering as a bank or probably even as an industry, I would say. Uh, and we looked at where do people really go? They go for liquid funds, they go for short-term debt funds. And we had seen a fair amount of equalization from a tax angle. But that did not mean that that would be the reason where, you know, whether it's CFOs or treasurers or people with short-term uh, liquidity, why would they keep money with banks? Uh, we found there are two, three areas where we had to really change. The first one was making sure that we give a fixed return for a period of time. So we decided that between seven days to 180 days, whenever you withdraw your deposit, I will give you a flat rate of 6.75%. Second was, uh, you know, banks typically have prepayment penalty charges when you break a deposit which in a short-term industry doesn't exist. So we took that away completely. The third piece was around partial withdrawal. I don't need to withdraw all the money. I had, I really want to withdraw part of it. So we kept a partial withdrawal facility also as a fourth feature. The fifth one, we said, listen, somebody doesn't want to partially withdraw. I would like an overdraft against it. So there is an instant overdraft facility at a very nominal charge. And finally, payment is at T plus zero, which all banks do for deposit. So I do think from our perspective, we looked at short-term money management and we looked at where are the gaps, why people don't come to us or probably at a larger industry per se. And we put our best foot forward and which is what we launched yesterday. Um, okay, all right. Yes, please go ahead. Sorry. And just to make sure that we understand this, our basic deposit book, 98% of all retail deposits are one year and above. So we really don't have a real short-term deposit book ever. Over the last two years with supply chain, vendor management, vendor finance, etc., we now have a short-term asset book. So it's easy for us to also match it off between a short-term liability coming and a short-term asset book at our end. So that was a primary reason we thought we will go ahead and make this what we think is a first of its kind uh, from a bank. Okay, Sorry, uh, interesting product. Yes, it's an interesting product is what I was going to say next. Uh, Mr. Kaval, now that we have this new product that you have put out in the market for short-term lending purposes, and uh, we have seen uh, this Fed rate cut that has come by recently, if at all RBI does follow suit, what kind of impact will you see on the asset and liability side, the impact on spreads and NIM side as well? And has quarter two so far been better than quarter one in terms of asset quality and otherwise? So definitely quarter two has been better than quarter one. Uh, really three reasons. Quarter one anyway is always soft for most of us and we don't have good reasons for it, honestly. <laughs> Second, uh, heat wave did have some impact, certainly on people on the field doing collections, doing sales. Uh, it's It was a bit of a tough uh, quarter, I must say. And we did see uh, some impact of that. And third, elections did cause some amount of slowdown in some areas, not all of it. And there were three real factors which kind of made Q1 a bit more uh, challenging. Q2 obviously a lot better from both the volume perspective, both from a collections perspective. So yes, it does look better. And on your question on where does you know interest rates go? See, uh, the reason why interest rates weren't probably going uh, the US way, so to say, in the past, or probably even now, is on food inflation. I think once we get a bit of clarity around food inflation, I do think that our opportunity to relook at uh, the direction of interest rates may be a reality. Uh, at least from what I see in the market, when we raise deposits, when we speak to consumers, it is certainly a softer environment than what it was in March. So it's still very competitive, but not as competitive as we've seen in March. So there is certainly a softening, so to say, in our head uh, when we meet with consumers, when we do bulk deposit pricing, etc there seems to be a bit more liquidity for sure in the system. 
Oh, that's good to know. Uh, I want to, uh, you know, pin you down to a couple of numbers. Uh, as far as the FI25 guidance is concerned, you know, you have an AUM growth target of 20%, a deposit growth target of 20%. Last time you spoke to us, you said that the cost of funds had peaked out closer to the 8, 8.5% range. Uh, do you stick to these numbers and what is it that you're targeting for NIM as far as FI25 is concerned? So, yes, 8% uh, is a cost of deposit. Uh, we will be at 8 or below. That's our sense. And I'll give you a very practical number. Uh, our peak deposit rate in the first quarter of this year was 8.5%. Second quarter, our peak deposit rate is 8.25%. And which is what I said earlier, that I could see a bit of softness. And we are able to grow with the 8.25%. Uh, and I do think that interest rates in our mind have picked out. Uh, mm. Second on, 20% growth in deposits, 20% growth, which is a annual guidance. Our first quarter itself was 5% each, both in asset and in uh, deposits. Mm. Only thing very important to us is, you know, we are really focused on growing the secured asset. Yes. So our growth in the first quarter on secured asset was 8%. On unsecured was minus one and a half. And to us, that is very important. It's not just growth, it's the quality of growth. And that's holding up very well. Similarly, on the liability side, our growth in CASA was about 9%, and growth in fixed deposit was 4 So, you know, it's a six and a half year completion in September. And as we evolve into a full scale uh, universal bank in the future, we would like to really move and get all the parts right. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kaval, uh, last question before we let go of this interesting conversation. I know your MFI book has come off to 38% of share versus 100% when you started the bank. But considering where the industry is right now, there has been some pressure. How is your company trying to, uh, you know, work around the pressures that the MFI industry is seeing generally? And what is it for you in particular? So I must tell you a bit about the stress and my view on the same. I think wherever companies have grown fast, because unsecured lending, if you grow very fast and you end up leveraging your customers higher, your stress levels are much higher. To that extent, we are a, slightly in a better position because our CAGR of unsecured loans between March 18 to June 2024, which is six and a quarter years, roughly is between one to two percent. That's a CAGR for six and a quarter years. So it's really not been something that we've been pushing very hard on. And which is why we can see that, yes, we do have a bit of stress. Nothing as compared to an industry which has really been growing at 25% CAGR annually, if you ask me. Uh, we obviously are seeing it peak out again in the quarter two. And quarter one, of course, was a bit more challenging because, you know, like I said, heat wave election. So it just got, you know, stress coupled with a difficult quarter made it look odd. Uh, we do think uh, it'll peaked out now. Uh, we don't have a bigger challenge here. And, you know, our buy so that we're very clear is, you know, we would like our microfinance customers, if they do want the affordable housing, if they have the business and they would like a business loan, they would like a two-wheeler, they would like gold loans. See, we do feel that financial inclusion has to go beyond unsecured right. because we have to put right. it to productive use or asset building use, which is what we are very busy doing. Hmm. Mr. Uh, Kanwal, we have a lot more questions for you, but we are running out of time. Uh, we'll have you again soon on our show to discuss these questions in a lot more detail. Like